What's going on, Giants fans? You're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. We're about to get into a mailbag where I answer your guys' questions, which aired on our live show, which goes down every single Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. And remember, if you want me to answer your question, you got to be a subscriber. So go down right now, hit that big red button, help us get to 11,000 subs on the channel. Sub for Giants dubs. Let's go. Shout out to Big Moo, a $5 super chat, my guy. He's a real one. He said, do you think we should grab Eric Ebron? Don't think it'll cost much. Great idea. You got to go back a couple of weeks. Remember, Eric Ebron was worked out by the New York Giants. After Daniel Bellinger started the uh, treat, uh, training camp excuse me, on the pup list, the Giants immediately worked out at, uh, Eric Ebron. And I think there's some ties there, and I think it would make some sense. He's the best receiving tight end left on the market, had like 13 touchdowns a couple of years ago, and I think he's still a solid player. It's all going to come down to the money like you talked about, Big Moo. At this point, the P players and guys that are still available in free agency are either past their prime or guys that are exiting their prime and want too much money. I don't know what Ebron wants, but he wants to come for a veteran minimum, maybe a million, million and a half, $2 million deal at most, and you add on some incentives – I definitely think that's a possibility. Great idea, Big Moo. Would not be surprised if that move comes very, very soon. Mikey, what up, bro? He said, cut Slayton and use cap savings to sign free agent help in O-line, linebacker, or DB. Okay, that's a great question, Mikey. I like this game. So if you cut Slayton, you save $2.5 million, and you'll have some money to spend. I think you got to use it at the DB spot. I think you're good at linebacker right now with Blake Martinez, Tay Crowder, Micah McFadden, Cam Brown. I think you're good at that department. Could you get better? 100%. But I do think you could use some more room in the cornerback department. Remember, when the rest of the teams in the NFL cut their roster down from 80 to 53, I expect, and you should expect, the Giants to be very active on the waiver wire trying to poach some of those players that were recently cut. Because good players will be cut, which means good players will become available, and the Giants, they could use more of those, and I believe they will sign at least one player during the waiver wire period after the 53-man roster cuts. Mikey, great question, bro. My guy AJ, he said, does Davis Webb make this team over to Rod Taylor? Oh, wow, are we already going there? We're going Davis Webb is QB2 over to Rod Taylor. Um, no. <laughs> I don't think that Davis Webb is going to make this team over to Rod Taylor. I think they both make it. I think Daniel Jones makes it. I think to Rod Taylor makes it. And I think Davis Webb makes it. I really do. I think that Brian Dable guaranteed a roster spot to Davis Webb when he signed him from the Buffalo Bills. Because Davis Webb was a guy that was going to become an assistant QB coach for the Bills. But he chose to come play for the Giants instead. And I think Brian Dable told him, Yo, D-Webb, you can play for the Giants. I guarantee you your roster spot. You don't got to be a coach just yet. I'll ask you the question, though, Giants now, real ones. Should Davis Webb make the roster? It's definitely not going to be about Terod Taylor. He's a lock to make the roster. I think the Giants keep all three QBs. I think he's earned it. I think he's looked really good in preseason. Kind of like a discount Aaron Rodgers with number 12, the hair and the visor. But let me know. Should Davis Webb make the roster? Also, before we go out of here, remember, Daniel Jones is, I don't want to say injury prone, but he's definitely missed some games. So I think having a third QB that knows the system and can help a young guy like DJ makes some sense. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Alzo, my brother. He said, Kenny Galladay for Roquan Smith trade. Uh, yeah, if the Bears say yes and they don't block your number and put out an amber alert for you because you're trying to steal. Um, look, Roquan Smith is one of the best linebackers in the NFL. Kenny Galladay is not one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. So I think you'd have to add something. And I don't know if I'm in the camp right now of adding assets like a first or a second or a third round pick onto a player no matter who he is to go and make a play trade for Roquan Smith because no matter how great he is, he plays a position in my philosophy of building a roster that's not at the top of importance or value. How much better really does an, ins an inside linebacker make a team? It's going to make the defense better, but how much does it result in wins and losses? Also, you'll, you'll take a dead cap hit of like $8 million if you trade Galladay, and then you got to take on another $8 million if you trade for Roquan. I'm not sure they have the roster 
uh, flexibility or cap flexibility to do that. I know that they don't. Um, great idea. KG for Roquan. I'd love to do it. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, though. I appreciate you, Alzo. My guy Juan, what up, bro? He said, who do you think is the X-Factor player this season? So X-Factor, someone, what I describe as an X-Factor is someone that if they play above their expected level of play, it results in the team taking a big step, right? So if I had to say an X-Factor player, I think Julian Love could be a guy on defense. If he steps up and becomes the legit starting safety nickel in the NFL, I think he'd be a guy that could make this team better. Is saying Xavier McKinney cheating because he's already a really good player probably? What about Aziz Ojolari? Eight sacks as a rookie. Could he go double digits? Could he go 12 sacks? If Aziz Ojolari cements himself as one of the best edge rushers in the NFL, I think so. So Love and Ojolari on defense, on offense, I think it's Wandale Robinson, and I think it's Kadarius Toney. Those are two guys that are so electric with the football that they stay healthy. Defensive coordinators are going to stay up at night worrying how to stop them. So I gave you four for the price of run. One right there. Shout out to you, Juan. Corinne, a real one. He said, will Kafka continue to call plays this season? So, yeah, so far through preseason, Mike Kafka has been calling the plays. Brian Dable obviously got this job, though, for his what he did as a play caller in Buffalo. So there's been a lot of conversations about what's going to happen. I think Kafka's going to start the season calling the plays. He's never done it in the NFL before besides the preseason. I think it'll be a joint effort. I think Dave will be obviously hands-on in the game planning and coming up with the strategy and, you know, just, just the flow of the offense and the scripted plays they'll run. But I think Kafka, a guy that's been in the booth, during the preseason, we'll be the guy that's making the play calls. But I think him and Dable will be in lockstep and in constant communication. We're going to be going live on the channel this Sunday for Giants, Jets, a watch party, the Battle of New Jersey, the Battle of the Meadowlands, the MetLife Mafia is going to be out full in full. So subscribe and be there. We're going to go live at 12.45 p.m. Eastern, 15 minutes before kickoff. I hope to see all of you there. You can ask Corinne. You can ask the Big Moo. You can ask all the real ones that were there for our last two watch parties. They're a lot of fun. Gets a little wild. It's just a lot of fun. Be there. Hit that big red button. Let's go, Giants. My guy, Clint, how many centers are injured uh, at the moment and who will be ready do you think we will pick up some cuts from other teams to beef up? Pull up that O-line depth chart for me if you can, Seeps. I'll start with the second question. Do you think we will pick up some 100%? I think the Giants are going to be one of the more active teams in the NFL as a team that's trying to pick up players on the waiver wire after a lot of teams cut down their roster from 80 to 53. And when you – is the depth chart in there? Yeah, just the depth chart. Um – Guys that are injured, Jamil Douglas, uh, he's injured. He got hurt in the preseason game. I think he'll be fine. John Feliciano is available. Shane Lemieux is hurt, and that's okay. Ben Bredesen also has an injury. We don't know the severity. So there's a couple centers hurt, but game one, John, we're good. We're good. John Feliciano is the guy that's going to be the starter, no doubt. I expect Jamil Douglas to be ready to go and also Ben Bredesen to be ready to go by week one. That's over two and a half weeks away. I think all of them will be ready, and I definitely think the Giants, Clint, Will be a team that's going to be active on the waiver wire. Richard Bangerfield, did you used to be on the Knicks fix, my guy? He said, are you concerned about Thibodeau? He was always hurt at Oregon, too. Are we already doing this, really? We're, we're concerned about Kayvon Thibodeau, who has an MCL sprain because of a dirty chop block. I understand it's legal in the NFL, but in a league that says that they value player safety, you shouldn't be able to run at someone full speed and throw a blind side chop block below the knees. I just don't think that has a spot in the NFL anymore. Clean play by the rules, but it's also like when you're in a, in a four-minute drill on offense and the defense has a player go down as injured. That's also in the rules. You can do that, but it's frowned upon. Not really apples and apples, maybe a little bit different, but you get what I'm saying. Just because it's in the rules doesn't mean it's not dirty. Am I concerned about him? Not one bit. It was a freak play. He got rolled up on. Shit happens in the NFL. The injuries in Oregon, not something I'm worried about. This is someone that's going to come back from his injury and be a difference maker for Big Blue this season. So I want to show Kayvon Thibodeau some love because you know the rookie 
You know the guy's hurting a little bit. His knee's definitely hurting. His heart's probably hurting a little bit because he may not be ready for week one. And as a player going to the NFL, that's sometimes all you can think about in your rookie season. Game one, I want to be there. My first time playing in the NFL. So type five in the comments section, the jersey number that Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be rocking for the Giants for a very long time. Show him some love. Type five in the comments. Mark P, any concerns for Robinson is there 100%. I am concerned. I don't want to say I'm worried because I think that's worse than concerned, but I definitely have some concerns. He didn't look good against the Patriots. He was getting cooked, to be quite frankly. I think he was targeted five times and gave up four receptions, or it was six times and gave up four receptions, was flagged twice for holding, gave up a touchdown. He's a slot corner, and he's being forced to play outside because how thin the Giants are at the cornerback spot. I'm concerned. I think he can get the job done. But I'd like next season for him to be the slot corner, not the outside corner, unless this year he takes a leap and he shows you he can be a starting slot corner. Definitely concerned, though. We're going to have to just see how it rolls out in week one, though. It's going to be a good test for us, the Titans. Brian, will Jones have a breakout year? Great question. He better. If he doesn't, if Daniel Jones does not have a breakout year, this is going to be his last season playing for the New York Giants. It's, it's really that simple. He got his fifth-year option declined. If he doesn't play well, I, I believe if Daniel Jones doesn't get the Giants to the playoffs, he's probably out. Like This is probably his last season. The last time we saw a situation like this in the NFL was Mitch Trubisky with the Chicago Bears. They declined his fifth-year option, and he led their team to the playoffs, and they moved on from the very next year. I think Giants are in a similar situation with the new regime coming in. I think he has all the ability in the world to break out. Best O-line he's ever played with. Hopefully the playmakers stay healthy. Hopefully Saquon helps him out. Best play caller he's ever played for in Dable and Kafka. He has all the tools he needs right now. It's just on number eight to finally go out and do it. The excuses are over. I want to give a shout out to today's proud sportsbook partner, BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Make sure you use the promo code CHAT125. When you do those two things and you deposit 100 bones into your account, BetUS is going to match that with a 125% deposit bonus, which means you're going to get a free $125 to bet with on the MLB, on the NBA, on preseason football like me because I'm a degenerate, or you can do it and wait till the NFL regular season. Just do it with our proud sportsbook partner, BetUS, chatsports.com slash bet. Make sure you use the promo code chat125. Sniper from deep. Is that KD? Is that his name? Is his name Sniper from deep? Easy money sniper. Not exactly the same thing, but all right. He says, should the Giants trade Kenny Galladay? We already had a question, PD, about Galladay for Roquan Smith. I said yes. Bear, Bears put out an uh, Amber Alert for me for trying to steal. But... When you think about Kenny Galladay, you got to think of the cap implications. If you trade him, you got to eat like nine, ten, dead million dollars in cap. I think it's eight to ten, somewhere around there. But I don't think they trade him because uh, what are you going to get back for him? Honestly, sixth round pick, fifth round pick. I don't think you're getting a fifth. I think you're getting a sixth or a seventh. If he doesn't play good this year, the Giants will cut him after this season, no doubt about it. New regime. Sounds like they're really not the biggest fans of him. And if he doesn't play this good this year, if he doesn't live up to the bill of being a $17, $18 million wide receiver, Joe Shane's going to cut him, and the Giants are going to move on. But before we get there, I'll give all the real ones out there a chance to be the GM and take the seat of Joe Shane. What would you do with Kenny Galladay? Would you cut him? Would you keep him? Would you trade him? I'm keeping him. There's no reason to cut him. You lose money. You trade him. You lose money. I'd keep him. Hopefully he bounces back. I don't have that much confidence in him. I was talking with someone early in the office. I would not be surprised if he goes off for eight touchdowns this year. And I would also not be surprised if he doesn't score a touchdown this year. I do not know what to expect from Kenny Galladay, and that frightens me a little bit. But let me know what you would do with Galladay. C for cut, K for keep, T for trade.